But um, for, for this week, too, then just with, you know, starting even yesterday with Cody, but then through, the, through this week, we just wanted to give, you know, our faculty and student leadership some opportunity just to kind of point our eyes forward to where we need to be thinking. And so I'm going to start it off and welcome our Dean of Men, Jeff Banks. Good morning. It's so good to be with you. Uh, let's just pray. Let's do that. Father, I love you. I thank you for your love for us. And I thank you for your presence here by the Spirit. And I pray, Father, that you would do a profound work in our hearts today as uh, we open your word, as you would speak to us, uh, that you would transform us, uh, that you would make us more like Jesus. And Father, that we would have our, our hearts uh, set on um, you as we're together. Uh, help me, Father, to, to communicate uh, your word uh, today. Uh, we desperately need you this semester. And I pray that as we, we consider that, that uh, our hearts and eyes would be fixed upon you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we are launching into uh, a new semester. It's second week, and for, uh, for some of you, this is brand new, like you're new students. This is first semester. You didn't even start last fall. You started just uh, this semester, so you're on this spectrum. Welcome. We're glad that you're here. You've got a, a ton of people in the middle, uh, those sophomores and juniors who are uh, persevering in, and then there's a whole another group of, of uh, people that are, uh, this is their last semester. This is your last semester, and maybe your reality has not set in with you yet. Uh, so we get this broad spectrum as we, as we begin uh, this semester, and, and wanna, I want to kick it off well. Um, I know there's mixed feelings here. Like, like some of you are here, and, and you're, you're excited, uh, you're, you're energized, you had a good, good break, you're ready to go. Some of you are already exhausted. Yeah. Like you've... You've done, you're in musical, or you've started practice, you've got games, uh, there's, there's class actually happening, there's assignments to do. So you're already exhausted, it's only week two. Some of you are here, and you're discouraged, you're disappointed, uh, maybe, maybe you didn't do so well as you thought you would last semester, uh, maybe there's mistakes that you've made along the way and, and, and that's overwhelming you as you start a new semester and you, you want to do things differently. You want things to be different. And some of you are here, you're just distracted. Let's be honest. You might even be on your phone right now doing everything that you can to avoid what God wants to he speak to you today. You're just distracted e either by a phone or, or by a game that you're going to play or, or an assignment that's due and I'm just praying that in the midst of all of these emotions, some of you are, are hurting. Like there's heavy stuff going on in your heart, in your family. And yet there's some of you who are really hopeful about what God's going to do this semester. So as we think about that, and I'm going to challenge us, and something I've been just praying that the Lord would give me is, like what do we need to persevere, to just begin the semester and then persevere to, so that we might finish well come May. Like, what do we need? I, I think college, I think you guys are smart, great students. You, you think you know what you need. Like, you're like, I need, I need something to help me get through this. In the midst of where you're at. For some of that, it's less reading and fewer assignments, Right? And gracious professors. That's what you think you need to get to May. <laughs> For some of you, it's money. Like, you, you do. You need money. For some of you, it's good friends who will be there for you. To encourage you and to pray for you. Of course, you need food, right? Like, you need pub pizza and donuts and, and really good coffee. That's what you need to get to, to May? This is what you need? And how could we forget? I know you think you need Netflix to get through. You think you need it. But here's the deal. Some of those are going to help better than others. But they fail 
in comparison to what God says that we really desperately need. Take your Bible, turn to 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians, chapter 13. Kind of ironic, we're going to begin with an ending. Because what we find in 2 Corinthians 13, last chapter, last verse, one of the great benedictions of the New Testament. A benediction is just a blessing. So we're going to begin with a blessing because in this benediction, we find what we truly need to endure and to get to May. And not just to end the semester, this is what we need all the days of our life. So here it is, 2 Corinthians 13, 14. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Man, just simple, sweet, kind of straight to the point. Paul wraps up this letter to Corinthians, Corinthians, uh, these Christians in the city of of Corinth. And he gets done, and and he gives us this benediction. He wants these Christians to be blessed. And what I I love about this, I mean, just a couple of observations about it. Notice the the triune nature of of the blessing. I mean, he mentions Jesus the Son, God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. I, I love that about this, the, the mystery and the beauty of the Trinity and who God is. And, and I love Paul's heart in this because he says this to a church that he had a pretty rough time with. If you remember the Corinthian church, they, they had all kinds of chaos, division, uh, sexual sin, and they questioned his authority and they gave him a really hard time. And yet at the end of the book, he's able to say, what I want for all of these Christians is that the grace of Jesus and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit would be with them. And so this is what we truly need. That that we need this as well. So what you really need, what we need, what every student, every faculty, every staff needs, first and foremost, is the grace of Jesus Christ. This is what we need to endure. Let's think about the grace of Jesus. Paul uh, has been transformed by grace. Paul's all about grace. You read his letters in the New Testament, and actually this phrase, this benediction, he uses three times here in Corinthians, Philippians, Philemon. But in, in the beginning of his letters, at the close of his letters, you always hear him introducing and using words like peace and mercy and love and always grace because that man was transformed by the grace of God. A man that would persecute and kill Christians transformed by Jesus and the grace bestowed upon him. So he became one of the greatest proclaimers of the grace of God that we know. It's this grace, his his unmerited favor, his incredible kindness to give us what we don't deserve and that the best display of his grace obviously is the work that he's done for us. I love earlier in this book, in 2 Corinthians 8, he was teaching the Corinthians about giving. He was trying to motivate them to give, to take up some, an offering, to give to some struggling Christians in Jerusalem. And he says, for you know the grace of Jesus, that while he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that through his poverty you might become rich. And he's just using that as motivation to say that Jesus... His grace ultimately displayed that he would leave the heavens, the riches, the glory, come to earth, go to the cross, and pay for our sin in full once and for all. It's his matchless grace that we desperately need as we look at this semester. I mean, if the Corinthians need that grace, I need that grace. All of us need that grace. Because here's the deal. There's going to be a day's coming very soon this semester where all you're going to have and the only thing that's going to support you is the grace of God extended to you in Jesus. We very much have been saved by grace, are being saved by grace, and will be saved by grace. 
And so on these days when your flesh gives into temptation and you stumble, it's the grace of God that's going to save and sustain you. It's the grace of God that on those days when you, when you go further than you thought you'd ever go, when, when you compromise your integrity, when you say, this is the last time I'm going to look at that image on that screen, it's the grace of God that's going to help you persevere. It's by his grace and his grace alone. We desperately need it. So I, I encourage you, I'll, I'll be praying for us that we would rest in his grace and just rejoice that our, our standing with God is not based on our, our own conduct, but in the finished work of Jesus on the cross. This is the grace that we need so that we'll persevere and endure to May. What's the second one? It's the love of God, and the, the triune nature of this is God the Father. The, the Father's love. We need, we need the grace of Jesus. We also need the Father's love. Some of you, you've had hard, hard past, and rarely have you felt loved. By maybe a, a parent, a friend. And here, as he's speaking to the Corinthians, and he's saying, he's praying this blessing of grace and love over him, he's saying that God's unconditional love and affection for them, which was the motivation to save us in the first place, right? We, we can quote, quote John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only begotten son. So it's, it's God's love that's motivated us to, to save and reconcile us to himself. And it's what we need now, every day. Like you need to experience his love. And it's what you're going to experience. I believe what God wants to, to lavish upon you that's going to help you endure. You think about God's love and, and our need for that. Because... Maybe you've never been loved that way. Maybe you're here questioning God's love for you. Like, how could God love someone like me in the midst of all that I've done in the past? Why would he love me so? You know what? There's some really good news in the Bible because there, there's, a, there's just his love that is everlasting and unrelenting in his pursuit of us and his desire to have relationship with us. And he wants us to experience his love. It's what we need. So I hope this will remind you of his love and the reality of that, that it's everlasting, it's unrelenting, because here's the deal. We, we tend to think that God's scorecarding us. And so like, when we're doing really well, uh, you know, we're, we're being really faithful, God's love increases for us. Like, we think that way. But when we forsake him, uh, he loves us less. And so, and so we can think that he's scorecarding us. And I'm a dad. And I have two sons. And when they fail to honor me, it, when, when that's happened in the past, I didn't ever decrease in my love for them. My love never waned. How much more with the love of our heavenly Father, not wane, and it'll be poured out on us. Like it says in 1 John 3, how great is the love that the Father has lavished upon us that we might become children of God. We might be called his child. So he's gonna love you regardless of the decisions you make. He's gonna pursue you with his love. Now, now let, me, let me also add, the Father's love isn't blind. Because Hebrews 12 teaches us that when we run far from him, he will discipline. He's a loving father and he'll discipline because he wants to draw us back. His love is, is amazing and unrelenting and everlasting. And, and there's going to come days this semester where you're going to be hurting, discouraged, and it's his love that's going to flood your heart. It's his love that is going to sustain you just as his grace is. 
So it's the, the grace of Jesus is what we need. The love of the Father, the Father's love. And there it is, the last one, the, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. This is what we need to endure. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Paul wanted they, these believers in Corinth to experience a fellowship, a communion, a close relationship knitted together, a deep association. And we can think of that in one way. We think, is he speaking of fellowship with the Spirit? And certainly that's a reality of the Christian life, of, of our relationship with God through the Spirit. But here, it's more likely he's speaking of the fellowship that they would have with one another that comes only from the Holy Spirit that is producing that in them because of their bond in Christ and faith. That the church, that Christians have a fellowship like no other that comes from the Holy Spirit. And this is pretty, this fits the context well. Remember, Corinthians, it's a church that's divided. It's, it's a church that's having issues and they need to, to have fellowship, one another, by the power of the Holy Spirit that would work within them. And so this is our need as well, right? This is what we need to endure. That this semester would go well in the, in the fellowship that, again, difficult days are coming. And you're, you're going to think, I can't do it. I can't go on. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to turn. And you might come to your breaking point. And it's in that moment that we're going to need one another, the fellowship that we have together. The bond that you have with someone sitting next to you or three rows back. The brotherhood and the sisterhood of the Holy Spirit that comes from Him. This is what we need that bond this is I'm, I'm there for you and, and you're going to experience that in ways like, like there will come a day when you'll be blown away by how God has used one another in each other's lives it's remarkable the fellowship of the Holy Spirit this is what we need not a, not a bond that's, that's manufactured or faked or coerced. A supernatural fellowship that is unique to the church. Unique to brothers and sisters in Christ. So wherever you're at today, I mean, we're all here. I mean, different backgrounds, different places. Yet we're all here together beginning a new semester. We think we know what we need to get through. And God reminds us, here's what you need. Like Christians need the grace of Jesus and the love of the Father and the fellowship that we have in the Holy Spirit. We need that. And I just pray, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna be praying. I mean, this so stirred my soul over the last couple of weeks as we got into the semester of uh, times where I was meeting with the Lord and knowing that I, I desperately need him to get through. Desperately. So would you please stand? I want to end. I want to end with the blessing that, that Paul gave the, the Corinthians. It's a blessing that, that my pastor gives us at the end of every service. Because despite what we think we need, here's what we need. This is what's going to help us to persevere and finish well in May. I hope this benediction will be pierced in your heart. You'll remember it. And, and you're, you're going to maybe journal someday where uh, you experienced grace, love, fellowship, and that's what God did in his work in your life this semester. So here we go. We're launching from here. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen? Amen. You're dismissed.